Today we're gonna to be making a crowd pleaser. Super easy to make and delicious. We're talking cheese and potatoes or pierogi ruskia, whatever you call them, they're gonna be delicious. Enough of this jibber jabber, let's get into it. All right, here we go. Into a bowl, we're going to add four cups or 500 grams of all-purpose flour. The recipe that I got from my mom originally called for type 500. That basically is describing how fine the flour is. If you live in Europe, feel free to use type 500 flour. If you live in Canada or the USA, all-purpose flour is going to work just fine for this recipe. You're gonna wanna put the flour through a fine mesh strainer. This will make sure that the dough is softer and will also make sure that there are no clumps in the dough. Less clumps now means less work later. Next, we're gonna boil a half a cup or 120 milliliters of water. I like to boil my water in the microwave. One minute, 30 seconds, and we're done. Easy peasy. While the water is heating up, get four tablespoons of butter ready. Once the water is boiling, add the four tablespoons of butter into the water. Whoa, it may have been a good idea to wait a few seconds. When the butter melts, place the hot water and butter into the flour. Mix it around so everything's incorporated. Add a half a cup or 120 milliliters of room temperature milk. This will add a pleasant sweetness to the dough. A half a teaspoon of salt, and we're gonna send that over to the mixer. If you choose to use a mixer and you have a paddle attachment, you could use it at this time. I usually start with the paddle attachment until the wet ingredients are mixed into the dry ingredients. Once a dough is starting to come together, switch over to the hook. Let the dough work itself into a ball. You may have to add a tablespoon of water or flour depending on the texture of the dough and its current state, but you wanna make sure that it's the right consistency. Once you have something that resembles a dough ball, take it out of the mixer and knead it by hand a couple more times. Be careful not to knead it for too long because the dough is like a rubber band. Work it too much and it will break later. When you're done kneading it by hand, set it off to the side for about 30 minutes to let the glutens relax. Keep the dough covered. While that dough is getting nice and relaxed, let's start with the filling. For this recipe, we're gonna be looking for about 500 grams of potatoes. In this situation, we had about three potatoes. You want to either use Yukon Gold, which is what I'm using here, or yellow potatoes. You don't want to use white potatoes or baking potatoes because they are too starchy. Yukon Gold potatoes are not as starchy and will be the perfect choice for this cheese and potato filling. If you don't have access to Yukon Gold potatoes, yellow potatoes will be just fine. Cube the potatoes to get them ready for boiling. Bigger cubes will take longer, smaller cubes will take less time. Before throwing the potatoes into the water, be sure to rinse them off to one, get them clean and get rid of any dirt, and two, to wipe off any starch that may be on the outside. Generously, and I mean generously, salt the potatoes. While the potatoes are getting ready to be fork tender, dice up a medium onion or about 150 grams. A little more is okay as well. Today, we're using a regular yellow onion, but if you have sweet onions laying around, those will also do just fine. Into a pan with four tablespoons of clarified butter or ghee, add the onions and caramelize on low heat. Clarified butter or ghee has a higher heat temperature and that is exactly what we're looking for. We don't want the butter to burn. When the potatoes are fork tender, drain the water and throw the potatoes back into the pot. My mother-in-law recommends mashing the potatoes instead of putting them through the grinder because she says if you put the potatoes through the grinder, the final filling is going to be rubber. Do you mash your potatoes with a potato masher or a grinder? Let me know in the comments below. Throw the caramelized onions into the potatoes. The onions at this point should be soft and glistening. The onions should not be raw or burnt. Place into a bowl and allow to cool. To the potato and onion mixture, you're gonna add one teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of ground pepper. You're gonna want a mixy mixy until all the potatoes, onions, salt, and pepper are well incorporated. At this point, if you taste it and it's too seasoned for your taste buds, that's okay, trust me. Next, we're gonna get the cork or tfaruk in Polish ready for the potato mixture. You know, I never realized how many different types of cork are in a Polish store. Is it common? Is every Polish store like this? Or is it just the one in my area? For this recipe, I finally chose a cork and I chose the one that's half fat cork. Cork or farmer's cheese is similar to cottage cheese, but is more dense and definitely has less moisture. 
we're gonna have to grind the quark. So if you have a food grinder, that's great. You can use that, or you could use a potato racer, whichever you have. Even though this looks like a lot of fun, every time that I've done this recipe, it's kind of annoying. The cheese is extremely sticky, and you have to clean the grinder really well to get all the cheese out. If you're doing something different and it's easier, I want to hear about it. Leave it in the comments below. Now that your potatoes are nice and cool and your cheese is nice and ground, now it's going to be time to mix the potatoes and the cheese. Mix together until it's all well incorporated. This mixture is no longer annoyingly sticky. Put that off to the side because now we are ready to roll out the dough. Depending on how fast you work, you're going to want to cut the dough into two or three equal pieces. Onto a floured surface, you're going to start to stretch out one out of the two or three dough pieces. Notice that the dough is no longer bouncing back. The glutens are nice and relaxed. Slowly but surely, roll out the dough. You will want the dough to be thin. Not paper thin, but thin enough that your pierogi dough is not too thick. There is nothing worse than a pierogi with super thick dough. Either using an ordinary drinking glass or a cookie cutter, you're gonna wanna cut circles in the stretched out dough. The size that I'm using is three inches or 7.6 centimeters. You can really choose the size that fits your liking. If you like pierogies to be a little larger, then use a larger glass. If you like them smaller, then use a smaller glass. The less space that you leave between the circles, the less work you will have to do rolling out the dough later. Uh, uh, uh. Remove the extra dough, ball it back up, throw it into the covered container with the rest of the dough. The dough should be soft and have some give to it. We are not stretching it like a pizza dough, but you don't want it to be too hard and break when we're putting the filling in. Take about a spoonful of the filling and place it into the center of the circle. I like to start at the top and work my way down one side and down the other. This is important. Make sure there are no holes. I like to use a fork to ensure that the dough is sealed tight. There are different gadgets out there, but this one is guaranteed to be in your kitchen. So why not use it? Using your fork, gently press around the edges to ensure that they don't come apart when you're boiling them in the water. Put the pierogi off to the side onto a floured surface. Keep the pierogi covered so the dough does not dry out. One after another, continue until all of the dough cutouts are filled with your cheese and potato. Keep them covered. This this recipe will make anywhere from 40 to about 60 pierogi. So if you're not planning on eating all of these pierogi at once, pierogi freeze really well. Place the pierogi onto a floured cutting board and you just want to make sure that the pierogies are not touching each other. Once you have all of them on the cutting board, pop them into the freezer for about 30 to 45 minutes. At that point, you could put them in a Ziploc bag. Let's get back to making some more pierogi. Roll out the remainder of the original dough ball to the same thickness. Each time you do this, you will be one step closer to enjoying homemade pierogi. That's what keeps me going. Finally, the last pierogi. I think I could have got one more out of this, but I'll leave it until next time. I decided that I'm gonna double up on the filling instead. It is super satisfying making the last pierogi. Now that we have all these pierogi and we're ready to enjoy them, we have to spice it up a little bit. At my local Polish store, I got some of this beautiful bacon. Cut off a small piece and cube it into small pieces. Throw it into the pan with some onions on low heat and let the bacon fat render down and let the onions caramelize. While that is working, into some generously salted boiling water, throw in the pierogi. For fresh pierogi, you're gonna boil for about 30 to 60 seconds. And if you're reheating some frozen pierogi, it's gonna be about two to three minutes. You could top them with sour cream, some bacon bits, and some onions. Sounds good, right? If you like this video, consider checking out some of my other Polish cooking videos. Like and subscribe. Thank you for checking out Raffle Loves Food, and we'll see you soon.